Are crypto and blockchain technology a Ponzi scheme? First, what is a Ponzi scheme? It's a form of pyramid scheme, a type of fraud, where a person or a group of people solicit funds from investors with promises of huge returns. The fraudsters mislead the investors about how the profits are generated. Profits given to early investors are then taken from subsequent investors. Ponzi schemes look like a pyramid with early investors at the top and newer investors at the bottom. As long as new investors continue to pour money into the process, it can grow bigger. Eventually, there are no new investors and the whole process breaks down. Elements of a Ponzi scheme include being ran by a fraudster or group of fraudsters, promise of a huge return, lack of a money-making enterprise, the fraudsters are secretly taking profits, and there's no transparency. Why does crypto seem like a Ponzi scheme? Many cryptocurrencies have appreciated at a high rate and some of the early adopters have become real rich. But why is blockchain technology and crypto not a Ponzi scheme? First, it is not run by a group of fraudsters. The top cryptocurrencies are run on blockchain technology, which is a computer program that is open source and public. The code can be tested and audited by thousands of expert programmers trying to find a weakness. All blockchain information and transactions occur on a public ledger and is stored on hundreds or thousands of computers around the world and is thus decentralized. Therefore, no single entity controls the program or information. Number two, there's no promise of huge returns. With crypto, there's a possibility of returns, but no promises. Investing in crypto to make money explains part of the worldwide crypto phenomena, but not all of it. There's many other reasons, such as people don't trust their banks. Remember the global financial crisis of 2007 and 2008 when banks had to be bailed out by the government? People are afraid of inflation. How many countries are churning out fiat money hand over fist using COVID-19 as an excuse? People don't trust their governments. Think Turkey and Venezuela. People and companies believe that blockchain technology has tremendous potential. They're investing millions into NFTs, decentralized finance, and the metaverse, to name a few. Number three, lack of money-making enterprise. Currently, blockchain technology has created many enterprises profitable. For example, foreign remittances. Currently, when a migrant worker from Mexico working in the U.S. wants to send money home to his family in Mexico, he has to utilize a company like Western Union or MoneyGram. They'll charge 3 to 10%, averaging 7% for a $200 transaction. Exchanging on a decentralized exchange can cost less than 0.1%. Pennies. The volume on cryptocurrency exchanges are currently in the billions per day. Exchanges that offer this service are money-making enterprise as well as being much more efficient. Another area that blockchain technology has created a money-making enterprise is with non-fungible tokens or NFTs. An NFT is a unique proof of ownership of a digital item like digital art or digital video. Before blockchain technology, it was difficult to prove ownership of a digital item. Anyone could just copy and paste. If there was a trademark, it could be removed or erased. However, with NFTs, each one has a unique digital fingerprint. Each transaction is publicly recorded on a decentralized network of hundreds or thousands of computers around the world, so there are less issues of copy and forgery or theft. Some examples of NFTs are a digital art called CryptoPunks. You can also be the original owner of some of Michael Jordan's game-winning shot videos that are also being sold as collector items or NFTs. But instead of a signed copy of the video, you own a unique blockchain digital fingerprint of that video. It is estimated that the NFT market is worth about $3 billion. That is a money-making enterprise. Another area where blockchain technology has created money-making enterprises is the metaverse. Nobody knows what the metaverse might look like. Before blockchain technology, any company that tried to set up a metaverse would control it. Thus, there was limited interest in previous attempts. But with blockchain technology, 
information about parcels of land and transactions can be run on decentralized sim systems. Since these systems are not directly controlled by any one person or company, the interest in these options have exploded. Some of these virtual metaverse land have appreciated 4,000% in the last year. Now, what about fraudsters that are secretly taking profits? Since blockchain is open source and public, there are no secret taking profits. There's no transparency. Again, blockchain technology is open source and public, unlike Ponzi schemes, so transactions are transparent. Now, what about meme coins? Are there cryptocurrencies that might have Ponzi scheme-like elements? One can argue that meme coins like Dogecoin and Shiba Inu were initially made as a joke and don't offer any type of utility or intrinsic value. In that regards, I have to concede that meme coins do have some characteristics of a Ponzi scheme. Now, aren't there elements of a Ponzi scheme already in our society? Don't banks, the stock market, healthcare, Medicare, Social Security already have those elements? Let's start off with banks. They have a fractional reserve system and are only required to keep 10% or less as a reserve. That means if everyone tries to take their money out of the bank at the same time, the bank can only give 10% of the people their money, not the other 90%. That element is more of a Ponzi scheme than blockchain technology. What about the stock market? The success of your investment depends on other people buying and investing. However, if all the baby boomers retire or the economy drops and everyone wants to sell their stock, the stock market will collapse. Doesn't the stock market have more Ponzi scheme elements than blockchain technology? What about healthcare and Medicare? Young people pay the same as old people, sometimes 500 to 1,000 per month, but old people are getting most of the benefits. Hospitals and surgery rooms are full of old people and it's young people footing the bill. As long as there are young people paying for the old people, the system is propped up. However, if the amount of young people shrinks, there won't be enough to pay for the health care of the elderly. This is true for both health care insurance and Medicare itself. Don't both have more Ponzi scheme elements and blockchain technology? In fact, Medicare may run out of money by 2026. How about Social Security? Retirees are able to benefit more than the funds they put into the system because younger people finance extra cost. As long as there are young people paying for the old, the system is propped up artificially. However, if young people can't afford to continue subsidizing Social Security, it will collapse. It's mess estimated it's going to run out of money by 2035. So Social Security has more elements of a Ponzi scheme than blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is a new way of storing information, has a utility and a value that is just in the infancy stages of development. Years ago, information was stored on paper. Then, it was stored on computer hard drives. Currently, the most valuable information is on the cloud or central servers. Whoever controls that information has power. Think Facebook, Meta, or Google. However, blockchain technology gives us another option information can become decentralized. This can limit the ability of a single entity to control it. Blockchain technology has already created new markets. We covered foreign remittances, NFTs, and metaverse. But also, decentralized apps can give us an option to centralize controlled apps. Decentralized play to earn gaming gives an option to control centralized gaming. Decentralized finance gives us an option to traditional banks. And decentralized cryptocurrency gives us an option to government-controlled fiat currencies. When the internet first came out, no one really understood exactly how it was going to work. Initially, it was very limited and used for simple things like email, and we called it Web 1.0. Eventually, it rapidly advanced to online shopping, cell phones, easy access to information, social media, some people calling it Web 2.0. The internet created unmistakable, tremendous changes to our everyday lives, affecting how we communicate, learn, and even think. In comparison, no one really understands exactly how blockchain technology will eventually develop, Web 3.0. 
Since the technology itself is decentralized, such entities as banks, corporations, and governments may lose some of their influence and power. Blockchain technology was just created 12 years ago and is still in, if, in its infancy. Just like the internet rapidly developed, blockchain technology is rapidly developing to the tune of $3 trillion. So much money is being poured into crypto NFTs in the metaverse because so many individuals and companies see the value and potential of this exciting new breakthrough. Even though there are already several thousand decentralized applications already developed and being used, there are countless other ways that blockchain technology can be applied. Cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology are not a Ponzi scheme. They offer a new way, a new option to structure many of our day-to-day -day functions in our lives. Just like the internet developed and eventually changed many facets of our lives, blockchain technology has a potential to do the same. Will our future lives entail millions of people working in a virtual reality metaverse, not controlled by any corporation or government? Will our future entail shopping in a decentralized economy not controlled by any corporation or government? Will our future lives entail education, social groups, and entertainment all functioning in a decentralized environment not controlled by a corporation or government? Everyone should become knowledgeable about the changes that are taking place in our society every day. Much like the internet, over the last 20 years, crypto and blockchain can add value to many of our day-to-day -day activities and have the potential to shape our very lives, society, and future over the next 20 years. This is Dr. Kidwell.